Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Uh, um. <laughs> Today, I am speaking with Uli Latekefu. Did I get that right? Yes. All right. As close as I'm going to get it, because my tongue is <laughs> awful, uh, <laughs> who's starring in The Legend of Varian Toa. Uh, you will also be seeing him in the new Young, young Rock series produced by NBC, who will be playing the, uh, uh, the Rock in his 20s. I only have one question about the series that I can a ask. Your Tongan, he's Samoan. Was there any of that rivalry going on in the casting? You know, did, did he do the Suvi Tao versus the Sipi Tao? And how'd that go? Oh, no, they, I mean, uh, it worked out. No, that didn't come up at all. All right. That's the only thing I had to ask because The Rock and I are both from the Bay Area. His birthday is the day before mine. Oh, We're both stunningly handsome, bald men. So, <laughs> I, you know, I saw the rivalry between Tong and, and Samoan, so I had to ask. You know, I don't know if that's the way it is in Australia or New Zealand. No, I mean, well, a little bit, a little bit, but you know, on on the whole, everyone's trying to work together now. We've 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 seen that. We've seen, you know, what that does, and and most of the time, we, we we're trying to we're trying to move forward together. So this is uh, you know, this is a great opportunity to do that. But I will say it's pronounced toa. Toa. So the the, the apostrophe is a glottal stop. So All that's right. the only thing. But you're good to go, man. So Baron toa. Toa. Yeah. Oh, uh, all right. Hey, I'm going to learn Tongan by the end of this interview, at least uh, some pronunciation. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to the family. <laughs> well, my cousin's wife is Maori, and he lives in New Zealand. He was trying to get me to move out there, and I said, no, it's you versus the island. It's not going to be you and me versus the island. I'll sell you out. I <laughs> got you. <laughs> so, you know, you and John, uh, John uh, Tui, is, am I pronouncing yeah. your last name right? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, John, John's a big part of the movie. He plays the Baron, the Baron in this one. Uh, your, your deceased father, who was a wrestling champion. And yeah. you've come back to the neighborhood uh, trying to sell the house while still trying to help your uncle out. But the neighborhood's gone to hell, which was kind of funny watching the movie because it looks like a really nice neighborhood. Well, looks can be deceiving. But also, by the time he left, you know, the... Uh, um, you know, during the period that he was away, that's when the neighborhood started to shift and things started to cha uh, change. The, the gangs moved in and things were starting to, to, to shift that way. Um, I can only describe the movie as an action comedy inspired by The Raid, the, uh, the Indonesian oh, right. film. Because you, know? okay. uh, you have to kind of go through all the bosses in this one and then you finally get to, to the championship match at the end. Um, right. Take me through the process, because you're Tongan, playing a Tongan guy who lives in Australia, which you live in Australia, and yeah. going back to New Zealand to try to help the family out. Like, how close was this to your real life in, you know, in the making of the, char in the characterization? And then what is it like going from New Zealand to Australia for people that don't understand I kind of explain it like going from the United States to Canada. It's similar, but there's the obvious differences. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, look, obviously, myself being Tongan, it was very close to my heart and something that, you know, I haven't done many projects where I'm able to to play a Tongan man. And, and uh, so that definitely was a, a main reason for doing the film. Um, and born in Australia, you know, um, going back to New Zealand, there are a lot of differences. Um, you know, there are far more, far more Polynesians in New Zealand, obviously, than there are in Australia. Um, so the connection to culture is a lot stronger, I would say, generally speaking. Um, so it's always great to go to New Zealand and touch base with the actors there because um, it just feels good. It feels right. You know, when it's, there's a connection there that kind of goes beyond words, really. Um, and so working with those guys it was what I felt was one of the main reasons why I did it was it might be one of those once in a lifetime opportunities. Hopefully it's not, but um, when we did it, it, it just felt right. It felt good. Well, the, the film is really funny. I mean, there's scenes, I'm not going to give too much away, but Nathaniel who plays your uncle Otis, uh, Nathaniel Lees, he's hilarious. 
you know, especially in the line where he mentions that you had German blood in you because Fritz didn't come from the Chinese side of the family. Yeah. And then uh, John beating people with the slipper. Um, you know, my family's from the Middle East, so we're used to being hit with slippers. and Right, so you get it. Else too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's that cross-culturalism that, that plays to multicul multiculturals in this aspect. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things is like, you know, obviously it's from a Tongan lens, a lot of it, but, you know, it's an immigrant story where, you know, someone came from somewhere to a new land to make something of themselves. In this case, it was wrestling. They, had, they managed to achieve something that was great and significant, left their mark. And once passing, they left a legacy for their children to continue. It really is that basic, you know, it's like the Lion King of of Auckland, I guess. <laughs> but but the beautiful thing about it is is that he, you know, John's character of the Baron wanted you to be better than him. So you right. went off and became, again, part of the immigrant story where the father broke his back in physical labor or athletics or whatever to allow his son the opportunity for education, yet mm -hmm. you still had the ties to the old ways when you came home. So it, it really played you know, first generation versus immigrant generation coming together and how you really have one foot in both cultures, even though it's still a lot of comedic uh, elements to it. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's common. I mean, I experienced that. I'm, I'm sure you may have too, is, you know, you've got kind of one eye looking forward and, and seeing how we can progress and, you know, the others looking back and trying to bring everything forward. And, and sometimes that's a balancing act that's very difficult to do. Um, and I've, I've, I've spoken to a lot of kids and, and young people that kind of uh, are living here in Australia and it's a very difficult uh, thing to manage the culture at home and the culture outside of the home where you can, you've, you're kind of wearing two hats in a sense. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's not unique to Pacific Island culture. It's unique to every, every uh, uh, immigrant story, you know. Um, and that's something that Fritz does go through. He's, he's trying to kind of figure it out. Um, which is, is, you know, it's a touching thing. It's a very human thing. Well, you guys pulled it off in the movie and there were a lot of laughs to it, which I enjoyed quite a bit. Um, I know Australia is like ha had that immigrant boom within the last 30 years, the way the United States did a hundred years ago. So there is, you know, that kind of catching up for the immigrant population of Australia versus the way it right. was in the United States. But, you know, when my cousins migrated to Australia for, uh, from the Middle East uh, during the revolution and the civil war, uh, in Iran and Lebanon, you know, I, I still get to hear their stories, which are quite similar to ours, um, just, you know, a few years after, after the fact, or a few years removed. Uh, how important was it to tell a story like this, not only from a Tongan perspective and the immigrant perspective, but to still be able to allow yourself to be athletic and funny? Because it's very difficult to mix athleticism, humor, and all these layered stories within what you're telling us. Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I'm hopeful, hopeful that we did it well. Uh, you know, it's kind of, we're very playful people, uh, Polynesians. We can play, we can have fun as much as we can, um, you know, be very serious and, and, and talk about things from the heart. Um, and so all those kind of combinations that kind of come natural to us and having fun hopefully bled into the film. And so that was really it. that was really the whole goal is to represent all aspects of of who we are our intelligence you know i think sometimes we 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 get a lot of recognition for our sports accolades which is very common because of our physicality um but we have some incredible minds out there who are doing wonderful things um outside of the sports arena and in teaching nursing health law all, all of that kind of thing so um that was part of the other aspect of it you know we none of us human beings are in a box. And so that was part of the, uh, part of the whole reason I'm making the movie. And that's a beautiful part to it because I get really tired of people being pigeonholed or typecast or stereotyped. And it's like, Oh, you know, he's going to be playing a Polynesian character. So at some point he's going to play rugby or he's going to do something, right. you know, athletic in, in regards, but you know, you rarely see the humor side unless it's the, uh, the very heavy set guy. Uh, you know, who should have been a sumo wrestler or something to that extent, you know, like right. playing the, the chief elder type thing. And the way, the way this came about was just so much fun and humanized everybody and showed multiple levels. Um, take me through the process of the audition and then landing the role. 
because that seems like a big part of really wanting to be a part of the story. Yeah, we actually had a table read uh, during the early stages of the script. Uh, so it was very much still in its um, early stages of kind of developing and rehashing it and stuff like that. And, uh, and from then on, I, I pretty much got it. I didn't have to really audition for it. They, they cut the people, you know, the producers and the director felt I was the right choice for it. Also, the Australian accent is, is pretty hard to do. Uh, <laughs> it takes quite a while to do. Ask um, Mel Street. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of, uh, it felt like the right choice um, for, for a few reasons. But that being said, we had a lot of work to do. There was, um, there was so much stunt work to do in such a short amount of time. We, we shot it in six weeks. It was a, you know, for an action film of that size and of that many sequences to fit in six weeks is, is very difficult to do. So we, everyone got their hands dirty and, and got stuck in. Well, I mean, six weeks and it, was it looked like it was filmed in just one cul-de-sac where, where it takes place, which was just a, a genius idea that it's one little tiny part of the neighborhood that's kind of fallen, fallen apart, uh, just really made the story work. And then the pro wrestling mixed in with the street fighting uh, ju just made it that much more enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was one, another aspect of it. It was all takes place in this one singular location and uh, it adds to the charm of it, I guess. No, it really did. And uh, I, I would be remiss to ask, you've played a pro wrestler in this movie or at least the son of one who has to, to win the title back. Uh, yeah. You're playing a version of a pro wrestler in a, in a series based on his life. Uh, when are you getting in the ring and trying to get into the WWE or uh, all elite wrestling out here in the United States? Man, I, I, that's, uh, that's something that I think you probably would have to do when you're very young. So uh, that, those years have flown for me. I, I'm, I'm very keen to, to go and watch one, though. I would, I would love to go, you know, <clears throat> growing up in Australia, uh, wrestling wasn't as huge, you know, it wasn't, uh, there wasn't, the culture wasn't there. Uh, watching it from overseas. So going to watch a, a, um, a WrestleMania or something of that size would be, would be pretty cool. Well, your new boss could set that up for you at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just interesting to see the progression from Baron Toa to, uh, you know, to the young rock and, and how that connection's there. And did you make that connection early on of being the son of a pro wrestler in one and then the pro wrestler in another? Uh, yeah. I mean, when it came across my desk, I thought, well, actually, when I read for Baron Toa, I thought, man, this, is, this feels very similar to, to Dwayne's story. Uh, you know, being the son of a legendary wrestler, obviously, um, but, you know, with some differences. And so when Young Rock came past, I thought, oh, okay, we've, we've, you know, we've done a bit of groundwork here, so we'll see how we go. <laughs> this was your audition for that. But the film yeah. is fantastic, man. I'm, you know, I'm not going to blow smoke because if I didn't like it, I would have just like, you know what, I think I'm going to pass on the interview because there's nothing nice I can say about this. But no, th this was a lot of fun. It, it was quite enjoyable. Like I said, the, the multi-layers within there. I'm trying to do my best not to, not to give it away, but, um, you know, the gentleman who played George in the film, whose name is slipping, slipping me around. Uh, Jay. Jay Langaya. Jay. Jay was fantastic, and, you know, his role as just the calm neighbor playing <laughs> back and forth with everybody and being the fence sitter, and you call him out on that because – a lot of people tend to not like or trust the person that tries to get along with everybody. Uh, right. Really has some foreshadowing in the film. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, when you when you read something so many times and then you sit and watch it, you think, oh, everyone's going to see this. But I was surprised that that uh, you know not many people picked up on it, um, if at all. So, yeah, um, he he's a fantastic actor. Uh, he's been around for years originally from New Zealand, came to Australia, did a lot of work here in Australia. And so, again, Nathaniel Lees, who was on The Matrix, uh, John Tui and Fasi Amosa, who, who uh, Dwayne just announced as part of the cast for Young Rock. You know, these are really well accomplished actors and um, to be part of it with them is uh, significant for me and significant for, for our culture, but also, you know, good fathers. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And there's one other character that I, that I want to make a shout out to. Um, I, for, I forgot the character's name, so please forgive me. But uh, he, the, the mute character, your, your childhood friend who is mute. And right. you, know, you were communicating with various forms, not only traditional sign language, but ver various forms of your own version of sign language to interact with each other. And what I truly enjoyed about that was that you weren't hitting somebody over the head with a sledgehammer saying, this guy is mute or he's deaf and we have to make it, you know, an effort for everybody to notice. It just flows with the story. It's never talked about. You grew up together and it just was what it was. And I really love that aspect of the movie as well. Oh, thanks, man. I'm the, I'm, I have to give credit to um, the actor Fussy, and also who I just mentioned, uh, to who played Kerry. That was really, that was really his idea to um, create someone that that we didn't have to explain why things were the way they were. We just present them as they are because that's what happens in life. You know, we just that's just life. Um, and so we didn't, he didn't, he chose not to make him explicitly mute or we didn't understand why had he gone through some trauma, like those kind of finer details we left up to him, but that was really his decision. And I'm, I'm stoked that he did make that. Uh, I love that aspect because we, like I said, we weren't hit over the head with a sledgehammer and I'm really yeah. tired of that thing, that thing as well. And it just flowed. Um, when you finally got to see the movie, and I assume that you might have watched it with your family at some point, because you know the Tongan ancestry with the Tongan parents in a Tongan, you know, Tongan English movie, yeah. in a bilingual movie. What was it like for your parents to finally see you playing a Polynesian character using the language that they taught you? And did your parents ever give you grief for mispronouncing uh, mispronouncing certain things because you know it wasn't native Tongan, like as if you had grown up on the islands over there? No, she, my, uh, my father's passed away, but my mum was very proud. I mean, she was, I think she was naturally, I don't speak Tongan that often here. Um, um, so I think she has, she was a bit, you know, a little bit hesitant as to how well I could do it. Um, but when she saw it, she was very proud. I mean, I think, you know, it's still quite emotional for me now is you would know when you hear your own language, uh, and see your own language being spoken on a format like that. It's something that kind of, um, I believe, speaks through to the ancestry and, and kind of you carry the weight of your culture and the weight of your ancestry through the language. And so when I saw it and I felt it, it, um, it meant something very special to her. So she, she was very proud. Yeah, I, I got to do that. And this is my big name drop, so please forgive me. Uh, I got to do that with Mel Gibson when he did The Passion of the Christ because he used Aramaic in the movie, you know, the right. whole movie's in Aramaic. So even right. though it's not exactly my dialect, I got to listen to it and, you know, it, it added more to the film for me than it would for somebody else just reading the subtitles. That's right. That's right. It's something different and significant. But, you know, there was, there was a time where that was probably something that in cinema wasn't practiced too often in, in terms of the Western audience. Um, but I think we're, we're coming around. Um, you know, I know we're running out of time, so I got to ask you this, uh, you know, the, the legend of Baron Toa is, is coming out on VOD in the United States. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if it was already released in Australia and New Zealand yet, but I, I'm sure it hit you, your shores before ours. Uh, why shouldn't an American audience tune into this film? Go watch it. It's completely different. Um, you know, it's obviously from this, this side of the world, you've got nothing to lose other than, you know a few hours you'll be fine you'll enjoy it i promise well it didn't feel like 103 minutes it just flew by i thought it was like it was a short film it felt like 45 minutes right well there you go see even better yeah at least i promise me, you'll you know. enjoy it. <laughs> i enjoyed it uh you know uli before i let you go where can we find you on social media if we want to connect with you at uli latokefu is generally me on uh, instagram Twitter, which I barely use, and Facebook. All right. And here's going to be the fun part. Please spell your last name for everybody so they don't sit there and try to wonder. Oh, my last name. L-A-T-U-K-E-F-U. Uli Latikefu, it's been a pleasure. The Legend of Berentoa comes out in the United States on December 4th on VOD. It's a big, fun action comedy that, that's 
taking place in a cul-de-sac that looks like a great neighborhood, but really falls apart with all the secrets and everything else. Still enjoy it. Thank you so much for your time, man. Congratulations on all your success in Australia and soon here in the United States. Thanks very much, man. I appreciate it. All right. And take care of yourself and enjoy the day over there.